Hi. Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel, Stereo Review X. Um, what we're going to do today is take a look at some vintage speakers. They're all mine. Um, and we're going to work, have a look at why they cost what they cost. Because the cost is not always related to how good they sound. There are some other forces at work there. So we'll take a look at that. I'm going to get the camera and just go through I'm just going to go round them so you get a close up right now. One sec. Oh. That is Kef Coda. Pay about 150 quid for those. Here we have Celestian Ditton 11s. Pay about 80 quid for those. Here we have Monitor Audio. MA4 Mark II. You might get those for a hundred quid. Here we have Bowers and Wilkins DM4s. Pay about 125 quid for those. And here we have Rogers LS35A. You can pay 750 quid for those. Really no problem at all. Pay that amount of money. One second. Okay, so one sec, one sec, sorry, 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 yeah. So, let's just quickly go through, let's just talk about why these things cost what they cost, what's going on, because, uh, you know, there's some big discrepancies here. I mean, curiously, to start with, this Kef Coda has almost the same drivers as this Rogers LS35A and they sound pretty similar they do not sound dissimilar in fact some people would prefer these they sound brighter I mean that's a more sophisticated thing ultimately that is a better thing but you know 150 750 and this is a hundred quid what's going on so I'll tell you what's going on is the Rogers 750 pounds could be a thousand pounds no problem why is it so expensive? It's expensive because it has a reputation. These are like hi-fi mythology. People collect 20 pairs of these really rich hi-fi, you know, lunatics. Uh, and it has a great history. Its a, a origin was it was a, a monitor designed for BBC outside broadcast units, literally small trucks, you know, as lorries they used to have. And there's, a, there's, just, there's just great desire created about these things. And I'll tell you the truth, I bought these, not for this much money, but I bought them because I just wanted to hear them. Because I was just so excited about it, I had to have them. And they're not that incredible, but... Uh, so there's this, you know, this mythic thing about them. The other thing is, of course, they're that small, you can post them. Yeah, this is a big, big, big issue. So, you know, you can post these around the world, you can post it all over England. Whereas, think about these, if you're trying to buy these on eBay, you can't post these, or no one will hardly ever post them, yeah? So, this drives the price right down. The other thing, of course, that drives the price down is most people don't want huge speakers, and that's what drives the price of the Rogers up because they're small and they're cool and they look good. These are big, uh, difficult to transport and post, as I said. So that drives the price down. You know, uh, I had to go to Welling Garden City. I had to drive wherever it is, 40 miles to get these. So these things, if you're on eBay, you might have to go and collect them, but you will get a much better bargain. You know, if these speakers were made tomorrow, they would sell for like way over a thousand pounds, yeah, for sure. They're quality things, really good, well-made things. So big speakers are massive bargains. If you've got the ability to use them, you're allowed to, you know, you can make that much noise and maybe you, you're gonna do, you're, you're happy just to travel to get them. Uh, and you know, less people want them. All these things drive the price down. So the truth is, if you came in here now and I plugged these in and I plugged those in and I gave it quite a bit of volume, you would want these. 
like 98% of people go, oh God, give me this. This is a big, you know, still refined sound, you know. Both, that's a Kef driver, that's a Kef driver, by the way. So, you know, they're almost, they're kind of related. But uh, this is going to make a big sound, you know, big bass. You'll be able to feel that bass drum as it hits the, the skin. You know, and this is going to make a small sound, yeah. But they're super desirable for various reasons I explained. So that lands up at 750 quid. This lands up at 100 quid. Uh, okay, I'll just go for these other ones and I'll tell you what things sound like, really. Uh, okay, so Kef Coda. As I said, same drivers as the Rogers, but brighter. So you're not going to get a lot of bass out of these, yeah? And you're not going to annoy, blow the neighbours away. But very nice for vocals. Vocals are really good on these. Uh, so, you know, not heavy rock, but really nice. This tweeter is lovely. You know, these are, you know, they're, they're desirable things, you know. And I guess this is desirable too because of the size. The size is nice. People want that sort of, you know, in their modernish houses. This is the kind of thing they want. Okay, this Celestian sounds great too. I mean, all these speakers sound great, else I wouldn't have them, you know, but uh, this Celestian really sounds great. This is a silk dome tweeter. This is a plastic tweeter. This is also silk dome. A silk dome tweeter will just make the treble sweeter, more ethereal, yeah? Like vocals, if you're really into, into backing singers or female voices or, you know, you know, songs with lots of high frequencies in, this is smooth and nice and airy, having that uh, silk dome tweeter. I mean, these again, not powerful. You're not gonna blow the neighbors away. If you want real rocking noise, don't get these, don't get these, don't get these. They're not gonna, you know, the thing that ultimately makes a loud sound is the size of the cone, yeah? You've gotta move air, You've gotta move air. So, uh, you know, anyway, okay. Now this, M uh, Monitor Audio MA4 Mark II, total bargain, incredible bargain. Uh, this has got a huge magnet, yeah? It's, uh, you know, it's about the, the magnet inside, big magnets are basically good. This is a silk dome tweezer. This is well engineered, see Monitor Audio, no one really knows this speaker. I don't think there was a ton of them made. And at the time, there was a, you know, I don't know, there was an awful lot of competition. And these kind, this firm at the time just kind of didn't get noticed that good. Uh, but they're really, really good. It's really good. This is well engineered. It's got a really nice complex crossover. God, a total bargain. As I say, you know, that will cost over a grand. If they made it new, it'd be well over a grand. Make a big, impressive sound. Nice, tight face, everything good. Okay, let's do this one. Uh, Bowers and Wilkins, DM4. Uh, what's nice about this, particularly, I mean, this is sort of classic British sound. It's a little bit restrained, just a little bit restrained. That's a tweeter, that's a super tweeter. That's not a mid-range unit, yeah? That only really comes in at the same frequencies as these other tweeters would come in. But it's also got a super tweeter. So, and that's nice because you've got more cones doing, you've got more surface area doing the top frequencies. It kind of spreads it out better. And this is a classic combination of tweeters. You'll see this all over the place. Uh, you know, you see it in Spender BC1s, IMF monitors, though the magnet is slightly bigger on that tweeter. But this is a really lovely treble. You get gorgeous treble out of this, you know. Well, you know, nice stuff, nice stuff. Okay, let's do, now, what can we say about this? I mean, I do like these speakers. Um, I, I play them myself a lot, yeah? Uh, you know, they're not 750 quid for nothing. Uh, what you're gonna get is a very accurate sound, yeah? I mean, these are you know, made as properly as monitors. And what that means is the BBC would be saying, oh, we've recorded something, now we wanna mix it, we need to know exactly how things sound, yeah? The word monitor is used 
liberally nowadays. Not everything, I mean, is, you know, not everything really is a monitor. But uh, this accuracy, you can listen to them all day. If you're really interested in the finer points of music, and if, say, you've got a really nice front-end system, yeah, you know, if you've got some real quality stuff, nice turntable, nice amp, these will, you know, reveal the quality that you've got. Uh, but are they worth 750 quid? Not really. I mean, not, not if you were to do a comparison to most people. If you're a hi-fi now, yeah, maybe they are. And you've got lots of money, you know. Some people got more money than others, so... Uh, um, that's probably about it. I mean, these are all good speakers, you know, that's why I've got them, that's why I've kept them. Uh, if I had to sort of go, if you put me on a desert island and said, which ones are you going to keep? You know, if I was on a desert island, I'd have them going to make a ton of noise. But if I was in a prison cell and I couldn't make a ton of noise, I'd have them. Uh, I mean, these are average prices. I paid less for all of these because I look on eBay every goddamn day looking for bargains, you know? And so, you know, if you, if you want to, actually these, I got for 45 quid. And actually someone delivered them, which is just sensational, you know? Uh, so, yeah, that's about it. So I'm gonna be reviewing other stuff, turntables, vintage amps. Uh, okay, see you next time.